Hey Uprightians, welcome back to the Upright Health Podcast. It's Matt Shu, and today I am pretty excited to be talking with Sherry Brown. You've probably never heard of Sherry. She is currently working towards becoming a registered dietitian so that she can help other people take control of their lives and their bodies. But what we're talking about today is her journey with the hip impingement diagnosis and hip pain that she had since high school. We're going to be talking about how she maintained the motivation over many years to avoid surgery and to gradually learn how to get her hip to feel better. We're going to talk about some of the setbacks that she encountered, some of the strategies she used to maintain motivation, and at the end she's going to share four tips that she thinks anybody with hip pain, and I think anybody with any kind of musculoskeletal pain, can use to stay on track and stay the course towards getting out of pain, understanding your pain, and treating your body well. I got a lot out of this discussion with Sherry, and I know you will too, so let's jump right into it. So to start off with, can you tell us about, you know, your, how this all started. How old were you? What were you doing? And what did you start to notice? Yeah, so it started probably about like six years ago or so. I was a cross country runner and track runner all throughout high school. So I ran about like six times a week, no breaks, like on vacations and summers, I was always running. And by my junior year, I started noticing like really bad hip pain. Mm-hmm. So bad. Like the only way I could describe it is kind of like a knife was like stabbing into like my hip flexor Mm -hmm. and it was like continuous pattern of like me going to PT, getting a little bit better and then going back to running, getting bad again. And then it was just like a circle like that. And so fast forward about five or so years, four or so years later, I had been to four different physical therapists. I had been to, I had two different MRIs, two x-rays, and all the physical therapists, I just, I feel like they didn't really know what to do with me. Mm -hmm. They kind of just said like, oh, like we should like increase your glute strength and, but nothing was really getting better. Um, And it wasn't until about this time ago, two years ago that I um, spoke to an orthopedic surgeon and he said that based off my MRI and my x-ray, I had FAI and that I needed surgery. And I was 21 years old at the time, and I was like, I don't want surgery at all (laughs) right now. Um, Can Um, you speak to that a little bit? So what made you, you know, what internally made you say, I don't want surgery at all? I've always been more hesitant with those things, Mm -hmm. but it just sounded really invasive and costly. Mm. And I just knew that I hadn't given a full effort with like my physical therapy for me to like choose surgery. It just like didn't seem right for me at the time. What uh, you said costly, did they actually give you like cost estimates or was it just sort of a general, like, I know this is going to be expensive. I kind of just knew. <laughs> yeah. I had a feeling that I was just going to be like, and I was also um, in school still. So I was in my last year of undergrad and having like a major surgery that would like be bedridden for a while really sound fun. Right. So, um, well, what kinds of what kinds of um, impact did you feel like it had on your daily life? Like, how was it impacting your school life and your social activities and all that? Well, it got worse as the I let the condition go. So. Post high school, I could get by like doing hikes and walks with pain. And I I guess because of cross country, I was kind of used to going through pain, like running pain, but I just couldn't differentiate what was running pain and what was like, this is bad pain. I would just go through all of it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so my freshman year in high college, I would work out like six days a week 
really intensely with pain, but I would keep doing it. And it wasn't until it caught up with me my junior year that I couldn't even go more than like two minutes of walking without pain. So the symptoms that I was getting, I would get like nerve pain in my glutes and it would kind of like radiate around there. I would get like a lot of like pinching in my hip flexors, a lot of like popping sounds when I couldn't squat and I couldn't really walk or do anything really. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. sounds familiar. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> so you, you mentioned you, you went to PT a number of times. Um, what kinds of things did they do? It sounded like they wanted to strengthen your glutes, which is not a bad strategy. It's definitely something that people need to do. But, um, you know, what did you feel like in hindsight now, what did you feel like wasn't working for you in, in that environment or for those therapists? Um, I think the problem of PT is that they just didn't spend enough time with me, you know, because at least with you, my session, it was like a full hour dedicated to just that. Whereas in physical therapy, they were just with me for like a little bit and they would give me like maybe two or three exercises to do at home. And like, that was it. So I didn't really have like much motivation to do it at home. And then the exercises they gave me were like really basic. Like it was glute bridges and mm -hmm. stretching and like that was it. <laughs> so did the therapist take time to kind of test things or did they like, was there a feedback process? Did you feel like when you went back, there was a, you know, a give and take or a discussion or, or was that also? There was a little bit of a discussion, but they were more kind of confused with all the things that I was bringing to them. Hmm. Um, so I just feel like they didn't really grasp what was going on with my condition. Okay. So uh, after you were told you, you needed to get surgery, um, what did you do? I freaked out because <laughs> <laughs> I was like still in school. I had like midterms. So I like researched a bunch online, like what is FAI? Like how can I do it without surgery? And then that's when I came across Upright Health. And I think it was one of your videos from like a long, long time ago when you like are describing FAI. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time that I thought about it as like a muscular issue and not like this permanent bone issue. And I was like, oh, wow, like I could actually maybe change this with therapy. <laughs> right. Awesome. Awesome. I, I think that's probably the one. Um, that's probably one of the first ones we made where it refers to like, I, I don't buy FAI. It's kind of the, yes. yeah, yeah, that's, that's, good. <laughs> that's probably the big one. We get a lot of love and hate for that video, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, it's the hate is actually worth the the love because then we, we get to hear stories like this where that video kind of flipped the switch and got you to think, Oh, maybe I can fix this. And that's, that's really what we're after. We really want people to know it's possible to really improve even if somebody told you, you know, no, you're, you're screwed. That's it. We really want people to get the, the thought that you got from that. So, um, after you saw that video, you know, what were your next steps? What did you try to do? Did you seek out other therapists or what happened from there? I think I contacted you pretty shortly after that. I like took a couple of days to think about it and then, I gave you guys a call or an email and then you emailed back saying that you had availabilities on the weekend and it was close enough that That's I could no kind of true. Let's just make sure everybody does have that. <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> but yeah, that's at the time I remember, yes, I could do that. Especially because you were coming from, you're coming from Davis, right? Which is um, several, several hour drive. So um, yeah. I did also think, well, you know, this, this is a young student who needs some help, so I, I'd be willing to do it. But these days, I have a baby, so there's no doing that. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, sorry. So I interrupted. Um, go ahead. So you contacted me. Um, you were going to come out. Yeah. So I came out, um, I think it was only a couple weeks after. So it was like still around the time that I had just gotten the diagnosis from the from the surgeon. And I, I forget what you had me do that day, but I remember we did like a lot of deadlifts and you had me squat in the beginning at the end. 
and I didn't really know what to expect, but I remember by the end, I was able to squat with like no pinching and no popping. So that was really exciting. I do remember that. Did your dad come with you that time or was it just... My boyfriend. <laughs> it was just Michael, right? Uh, Michael yeah. That? Okay. Um, <laughs> was this Michael? Okay. Don't, don't tell him I misremembered that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do recall you thinking kind of like, oh, wow, I can now squat. And that's that's a big change. And that's after, you know, about an hour of just turning on different muscles. So what, yeah. what was going on in your head at, at that point? Like, what what did that do for you mentally? And what, what did you start thinking at that point? I think that was like kind of the spark that I was needing to get me motivated you know, because I had been having so many, like, down moments of when I would walk and then I would feel pain, I would work out and feel pain, like anything I did felt pain. So it was nice to finally see like a change where like I did something and the pain reversed. Mm -hmm. So I was excited, but I was also kind of nervous because I didn't want to feel pain after that because I was like, well, like, if this is the right thing to do, then my mindset was, doing it I should be pain free from now on you know yeah <laughs> I was scared to like have pain again because I was like oh shoot that means that this is wrong which is totally the wrong way to look at it because I did have pain afterwards so yeah can um, you speak to this process because it's, it's, this is probably the most important thing for people to hear so please talk about this I feel like for anyone who's going to listen like definitely expect or don't be like afraid of pain that comes after any of the sessions because um it could also just be like your body adapting you know and so I was like really really sore because those glutes and like those specific muscles just hadn't been firing in ages like I don't know how long and all of a sudden you know I was working them out for an hour and so the days afterwards I was like really really sore um, didn't stretch <laughs> and so being tight and not stretching and then continuing my daily activities um, made my muscles tight and then I got pain again mm -hmm. so. so what did you find uh, throughout your retraining and recovery process what did you find helped you navigate the pain what, what helped you stay motivated to, to continue what was going on for you finding like a routine that I could stick to that was easy enough for me to follow when I was in school um, and being really like adamant with my stretching and strengthening exercises after the sessions because sometimes I would think I would do the session and I'd be off the hook for a while but <laughs> I, after a few sessions that after the session was like the best time for me to like start to like continue my exercises mm -hmm. um, otherwise I would get you know, I would get the tightness in my hip flexors or I would get radiating down to like, I'll get knee pain sometimes. So it was hard because I was like, maybe I'm like not doing this right. Maybe this isn't the right path, but I don't know. I guess I was so scared of surgery. I just like kept going that way. <laughs> so that's what get me going in the beginning. So um, I think, I think I only saw you at, at Upright Health what was it, like four or five times over the last couple of years, right? Yeah, so yeah. the whole way that this this uh, interview came up is because Sherry um, actually uh, just sent me an email recently and said, hey, thank you. <laughs> My hips are definitely moving in the right direction. And, and you mentioned that you were doing yoga and that that was a huge, was a huge moment for you. Can you talk about that moment? Yeah, I think I started seeing you like November of 20, I think... 2017 or so? Would be, this yeah, is, it, it must be 16 because this is... 16. Yeah, yeah, it must have been 2016. Yeah. And, you know, I would feel better, but that I was still, like, wasn't, like, all the way there. Um, and it wasn't until I graduated in 2017 that I stopped sitting. And that was, like, a really huge thing. So I stopped sitting, like, hours and hours a day. Um, and so I was able to... Um, do yoga and in the past when I was still in school and I did yoga I would it would cause a lot of pain so I was always like really scared of doing yoga 
And it wasn't until um, about a year after graduation with like constant stretching, um, I eventually bought the FAI fix. So I was doing that daily. And I think I was in a better position to do yoga. And I think it was this past, I think, March. So just like a couple months ago, maybe like six, seven months ago, whatever, I was midway through a hot yoga class, my first yoga class in like a long time. And I just caught myself. I was like, wait a minute. I'm like doing all of these poses perfectly with like no pain. And I just like almost started, I started crying in class, not like sobbing, but like I had tears coming down. Oh, man. I just was like waiting for like this huge moment where I would just be like, wow, like I feel better, but it never really came. It just came like one week. I would feel a little bit better. It was really gradual. And so I didn't notice that I was better until months and months afterwards. That's such a it's such a beautiful moment, um, to, it, and it's, it's such a it's such a cool thing to highlight that I haven't really thought about before. Which is, you know, the pain is like obvious, right? The pain is always yeah. obvious. It's there. It's like oh, just I need to put all my attention on it. But as your your pain disappears, there's not like a clear, sharp feeling of good right good is just like yeah i'm free i can move whatever and you don't really notice it until you are you're doing something and then you remember oh this used to hurt yeah oh i'm free from that (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. so um i yeah so when i when i read that that um, little bit in your email about you know crying in class because you realize you weren't in pain i just thought oh my god we we have to we have to share that story with other people because that's it's that's one of the moments that it makes what what we do at upright health feel really good and we know that we're helping impact somebody um, in a really positive way so really thank you for sending that email uh, when you did you know um, yeah again you know i hadn't heard anything from sherry in a long time so (laughs) it was good it was a big surprise, but a great surprise. Um, so, enough gushing. Um, so, when you're when you're thinking about all of this in hindsight, and you're looking at all the things that you've done um, over the last couple of years to help yourself, um, are there any specific tips that you would give to uh, yourself? If, you know, you're talking to yourself at age 16, 17, or talking to another person going through the same problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've thought about this a lot, actually. Um, There's four huge things that I wish I knew way back then when I had started. Um, The first one being that it's not going to be like a continuous uphill, you know. Um, So like when you begin the journey, there's going to be a lot of downfalls. There's going to be a lot of flare ups. And just knowing that that's okay. And instead of letting that like get you down, like, having that inspire you to keep going and um also try and like and that to have that inspire you to figure out like why you mm-hmm. know now when i get pain i'm like really curious and like excited to like figure out why i'm getting pain right that's an awesome tip that's an awesome tip all yeah. right <laughs> um second one kind of goes with that is keeping a journal so i was just going right before this interview i was going through my journal Um, and it was just really cool to read the things that I was doing and then the pain associated with that. Mm. Um, So if you keep a journal for a long enough time, you can kind of like get a trend as to like, Oh, like whenever I eat really poorly, sleep poorly and don't stretch, I get pain, you know, or whenever I do the specific exercise, I feel really good the next day. Um, that's, I wish I had done it more because I only have like a couple pages of the journal <laughs> <laughs> but it's still even that helped you identify certain trends for yourself cool it's also cool just to remind yourself like oh wow like i was really that in that bad of a position before <laughs> you kind of forget like how bad the pain was yeah so that's um that um that's actually a mental strategy that we often um, will suggest to people is like do little little rewinds so if you don't keep a journal you just have to use a memory and just think back like 
what was I feeling like two weeks ago? What was I feeling like four weeks ago? What was I feeling like four months ago? And just making those comparisons um, can be very motivating. You know, if you're in constant pain every single day and then, you know, the next week you're in pain, but it's every other day, that's, you know, you, you might miss the fact that you now have half of your week yeah. back, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, a journal is a great idea. Um, yeah. How about tip number three? The third one is to actually like stick to a routine and not BSing it. So I think in the past I would tell myself, I was like, yeah, like I'm doing math routine. I would do it every now and then. But if I was being honest with myself, like I wasn't giving it the full attention that it needed. I would spend maybe like 10 minutes a day here and there, sometimes an hour. But I wasn't really dedicating that much time to it. And I think like with anything, you have to put a lot of effort into it. So if you want to see results, you really have to put in the amount of time, like a lot of time for it to get good. It's not going to be easy at all. (laughs) And I think if you can't like afford 30 minutes to an hour of your day per week to improve your health, then you need to figure out something else. You need to like change your mindset. Yeah, that's actually a, that's a really good point. You know, carving out the 30 minutes to an hour every day and just doing that every single week, week after week, it, uh, can feel very challenging. I know for me, um, there were times where, where that's felt challenging. Uh, even recently, it's felt challenging. But, um, you know, recently I've noticed if I really want to carve out the time, there's ways to do it. Uh, that's actually why uh, I recently put out a video on YouTube, which we'll link to which was, you know, how to break your iPhone addiction and just, you know, make sure you're not wasting hours on social media and hours clicking around mindlessly on the internet. There's tons of time gets wasted there and you can find the time to put in the exercise that you need to do to make your body feel good. So that's a great point. Great point. Um, Do you have have anything to add to that? (laughs) Um, No. The pretty much just being honest with yourself because I don't think I was being honest. Um, and if you find yourself <clears throat> like not seeing the results, it's probably because you're not putting in the effort. <laughs> yeah, that can definitely be right. And sometimes though, you also need to course correct, right? Sometimes if you're doing yeah. certain exercises and you're doing them a lot and they're not helping, it could be the wrong exercises, right? So Definitely. Like for me, like I was doing the exercises, even when I was doing them consistently, I was sitting all the time. Mm-hmm. And so like, even though I was adding in a bunch of good things, I was still doing like the underlying cause, like the underlying cause was still there, which was like the sitting, the chronic sitting and like having my hips in that position. Right. So even okay. though I was doing this benefit, I was still sitting. So I wasn't seeing much results. Yeah, I remember we, we discussed one of the times you were at the uh, at the studio. We had discussed just how much you were sitting, and it was literally the entire day, and then into the night. All the time. <laughs> I was just studying all the time, and it was so unhealthy. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's. I mean, hopefully, with your your upcoming um, dietitian education, you'll have the opportunity to uh, not sit so much. <laughs> yeah, I'll be better. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then the fourth one, I think probably the most important is to find like your main why, like what's your reasoning for this, you know? And I think having that will be really important for, um, for when you like you get stuck or like when you have a flare up or when you're feeling lazy on the bed and you don't want to do the routine. So for example, like if your reason is because you want to run again, then ask yourself, like, why do you want to run again? And then just keep asking yourself why after each answer until you get down to, like, the root of it. And then just keep that so that when you're feeling down, um, you'll be able to continue. So, yeah. <laughs> Would you be willing to share your why? You know, why that you can let people uh, know about? That's a good question. I kind of change it up a little bit. Um so for me for a while is because I wanted to run again, but that wasn't like a big enough reason for me. Um, I don't know if I fully figured it out, hmm, okay. but I know that I want to be a better 
version of myself so that I can help, you know, like my family, you know? So if I'm in a better state of like emotional health and physical health, then I'll be better able to, you know, support my boyfriend or my family. Yeah. But so, I haven't so, narrowed it down to like my perfect why yet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think nobody, I mean, it may be impossible for people to ever reach the perfect why that's permanent, that works all the time. But um, like you, I, I often would, um, I would often think about like, oh, why am I doing this? Because, you know, I'm spending two hours doing this and spending however many hours doing this. One thing that came up for, for me um, as I was going through my own hip issues was, you know, I want to be able to play hockey again. And also, like, if I ever have a kid, which now has become the case, right, then I want to be the dad who can play with my kid. Right? I want to be the yes. dad who can run around on the playground. I don't want to be the dad who's just sitting on the bench because, you know, I don't want to throw out my back or because my hips hurt too much and all that kind of stuff. And whatever the reason is at the moment, you're asking yourself, take that reason and just run with it. Right? It's, it's valid. Exactly. Right? And as well as it yeah. motivates you. Yeah. So anything else that you'd like to add? There's, um, this is this, whole hip impingement diagnosis has become such a huge deal in the last 15, mm -hmm. 15, 20 years. Um, is there anything that you feel like would be helpful for people to hear or uh, useful for people to hear from your perspective? I guess something that I hadn't mentioned to you before too, is that I also have a really weak core and I think that's really correlated with my hip issues. Hmm. So, I don't know if it's DR, which is diastasis recti or not. Um, I just know that I have like connective tissue issues there. And so having a really weak core and weak glutes was like a combination for me to just for failure. <laughs> it was just causing a lot of pain. Um, so for me, my version of FAI, um, the stretching and the hot yoga is really what helped me a lot. I just like needed to stretch um, from them being too tight. But I know there's other types of people who are too flexible, so they need to not stretch as much. So, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think uh, a takeaway there um, for people who are listening and dealing with their own hip stuff is there can be a lot of different causes. So one, one of the major points of confusion, I think, is, is that – because the medical system has created this idea of FAI as like a single entity as like hip impingement is hip pain because your bone is this way. Um, yeah. It really just confuses the issue for people, right? It's, you know, you could have hip pain when you go into a squat, but maybe for you, it's because something's really weak, right? For somebody else, it's because something is really needs to be stretched. And the bone is actually irrelevant, right? So yeah, it's, it's, exactly. yeah. So it's really about how you're training your body and being able to listen to your body and adjust based on the feedback you get. So um, yeah, it's really great that you identified like, hey, my my abs, they're not working, and that affects how my pelvis stabilizes, whether my pelvis can be in the right spot, and then yeah. can my leg, mu my hip muscles actually pull my leg around the right way. So. That's definitely, you know, that's definitely a common thing that we've seen. So, you know, it's good, you know, for you that you were kind of on your journey on your own and kind of thought about it, observed, and really identified those key issues. I, I'm, one of my goals with anybody I work with is um, to help them understand how to listen and then adjust. And it sounds like you did that amazingly well. <laughs> so, yeah. Congratulations. That's fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Um, so Sherry, um, do you have any inspiring words, anything else you want to add? I think that's it. Other than, I mean, to anyone who's listening, like, um, working with you is really, really amazing. Um, and it's, it's inspired. It was inspiring mean, for me to see other people's videos. Um, so I hope that this sparks someone interest and inspires someone else who has similar issues as mine. Where do you see your um, your physical health going from here? What do you 
see as your your long term goals in terms of athletics or whatever it is? Well, I hope I want to be one of those hikers and fit like 70 year olds. <laughs> um, so that's like my goal. But in a little bit shorter time than that, I'd li- like to become like a yoga teacher um, or at least get good enough to do all of the poses because there's still some that I need to work on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't know, I'll probably cry if I say it, but I would love to run one day again. I haven't ran in ages just because I'm scared. Um, it'd be really cool to do like a half marathon or a marathon one day. Well, I support you in that. I think <laughs> it's definitely something if you feel called to do it, then you should start training towards it. And if it, if it brings tears to your eyes, then it's probably something you should be working towards, right? So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's beautiful to find those um, those types of motivators in yourself and then to, to honor them and to actually pursue them. So, um, yeah, I, I hope you will start taking those steps. Slow steps, gradual steps, safe steps, but yeah. towards those goals. Um, well, Sherry, again, thank you very much for um, joining us today. And um, let's close off with um, everybody should always remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you found Sherry's story inspiring and insightful, and I hope it moves you to take action and take control of your own body. If you're looking for ideas to help you help yourself, check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash upright health. And if you've been told you have FAI, make sure you check out the FAI fix at the FAI fix.com. If you've got other hip issues or you've got shoulder issues and you're just trying to find inspiration to help you help yourself, check out uprighthealth.com slash DIY for some of our do-it-yourself programs. And if you want to hear more episodes of the Upright Health Podcast, you can find us on iTunes. You can find us um, through Google Play. You can even find us on Spotify. You can find us on our website at uprighthealth.com slash UHpod, P-O-D, UHpod. And if you're listening on iTunes, if you're listening somewhere where you can leave a review, then we would really appreciate your leaving a review so that we know if you're enjoying the content. And also, the more reviews we get, the more positive reviews we get, the more people end up listening and getting this message. So if you love our message and you want to help spread that, please leave us a review. We really appreciate it. As always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.